For the past year now, I've been deploying the majority of my production services to VPS instances, making use of both Docker Stack and my own production-ready VPS guide, which is now available for you to read in blog form on my Dreams of Code website, uh, by the way. By deploying to a VPS, it's allowed me to both save money on cloud costs, whilst also enabling me to have full control of my own infrastructure, uh, at least when it comes to software. However, one thing that always weighs on the back of my mind when it comes to using a VPS is making sure it's as secure as possible. And whilst I haven't had a box get popped yet, uh, knock on wood, given the rise of vibe coding that we've seen over the past few months, it feels more like it's going to be a when rather than an if. And so, rather than waiting for it to happen to me, I decided to revisit my current setup and tighten up any areas that might be a little loose when it comes to my production deployments, in order to make them as secure as a Bitcoin wallet you forgot the password to back in 2017. Diamond hands, am I right? <laughs> In order to level up the security of my VPS deployments, I decided to first focus on one area that I've often been uncomfortable with when it comes to my current setup. Publicly accessible services. These include things such as admin dashboards, database instances such as Postgres, and more system-level services such as SSH, which is what I use to both manage my VPS instances as well as automatically redeploying my application through a CI-CD pipeline. The reason these services feel uncomfortable from a security point of view is because of how much access one would gain if any of them were compromised. Whilst these services do require authentication in order to be accessed, when it comes to security, I'm very much a fan of the belt and braces methodology, which other than being fantastic fashion advice, basically means doubling up on any security layers. Therefore, when it comes to hardening these publicly accessible services, the best way to do so is to to basically take them offline, meaning that they can no longer be accessed over the public internet. Not only does this approach help to protect in the event of an accidental misconfiguration, but it can also help to reduce the impact of things outside of your control, such as a zero-day vulnerability, or in the event that you do something stupid, such as accidentally leaking your credentials to the world through a YouTube video. Therefore, I decided to start by removing public access to SSH, effectively turning it into Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. For my non-American viewers, that means closed AF. In order to do so, I decided to begin with the VPS instance that I've deployed my new zenblog.ai microsas on, which is an automated blogging service for content creators based on what I ended up building in my recent video on building an automatic blog formatter for my Dreams of Code website. In order to remove public access from SSH, I had a couple of different approaches that I could take. The first of which was to limit access to port 22 on my VPS to my home's IP address only. Given that I have a static IP for my home network, then this was a viable option, as there was no risk of my ISP changing my home IP address, which would then cause me to suddenly lose SSH access to all of my running instances. So initially, I went about setting this up, running the following UFW commands, which would not only allow my IP address to access port 22, but would also deny it for everyone else. This ended up working pretty well until about a couple of weeks ago, when I was traveling and I could no longer directly SSH into my VPS when I needed to. Fortunately, I was still able to get access by tunneling into my home network through the WireGuard connection provided by my Dream Machine router. However, this ended up being a pretty poor user experience, as my SSH traffic was now performing a double hop through my home network, which meant that it would sometimes take a full second for my key presses to appear. In addition to this poor user experience, however, the other major concern that I had was that I had now introduced a critical point of failure into my setup, in that if my home internet ever went down, I would be unable to access my VPS instances. Given where I live is now more and more susceptible to tornadoes, then there's always the possibility that my home internet can be down for days at a time. And therefore, I decided that this approach wasn't going to be viable after all. So I decided to look for another solution, and ended up using one that I think is a much better user experience. Tailscale, who also happen to be the sponsors of today's video. If you're unfamiliar with Tailscale, it's a product that basically creates a secure mesh network between your devices using WireGuard in what's known as a tail net. 
This allows any of the devices on your tailnet to communicate with one another privately, as per the configured access control list. This means it's not only great for locking down services that you don't want to be publicly accessible, such as SSH, but you can even use it to control what the machines on your tailnet are able to access as well. In addition to locking down SSH, some of my other favorite use cases of Tailscale include setting up private networking across multiple VPS instances, securing access to admin dashboards, allowing me to connect to my K3's cluster whilst traveling, and perhaps my personal favorite, using it for review apps. However, those are going to be topics for another time. In order to add Tailscale to my VPS, the first thing that I needed to do was to create an account at Tailscale.com, which if you use the link in the description below, you can do for free using the personal plan, which gives you 100 devices and up to three users for free indefinitely. Or if you want to use an upgraded plan in order to get access to more features, you can do so using my Dreams of Code coupon code, which will give you three months of either the personal plus, starter or premium plans for free, each of which comes with higher usage limits and more advanced features when deploying on a VPS. In any case, once I'd managed to sign up for Tailscale, the next thing I needed to do was to both install it on my local machine and on my VPS. To do so on the VPS is incredibly simple. All I had to do was copy and paste the following command into my terminal, which went and installed Tailscale for me. Once it was installed, they then needed to go ahead and authenticate using the sudo tailscale up command, which allowed me to open up my browser and connect my VPS with my account. Once complete, I could then see the VPS inside of my tailscale dashboard, which informed me that everything was working correctly. Next, it was time to install it on my local machine. Since I was traveling when I was setting this up, I went about installing tailscale on my MacBook Pro using the installer found on the website. However, Tailscale also happens to work for Linux as well, with installation instructions both for Arch, by the way, and NixOS, which is what I'm running on my Framework 13. Once installed, you can then either set up Tailscale using the GUI, if that's your preference, or by using the CLI, which is by, again, running the same Tailscale up and Tailscale login commands. Again, once that was complete, I could confirm that my local machine was also connected to my Tailnet as well. The next thing to do was to confirm that I could SSH into my VPS from my local machine by using Tailscale. To do so, I needed to SSH in with the private IP, which in my case was as follows. If you try and DDoS this, it's not exactly going to be effective. This is because this IP is a private IP address defined by RFC 6598, which means it's neither accessible over the public internet, nor will it conflict with other private IP addresses defined by RFC 1918. Upon running this SSH command, I was able to log into the VPS, which meant everything was looking good. With SSH over Tailscale confirmed, the next thing to do was to ensure that SSH would only work over the Tailnet, which meant disabling it on the public IP of the VPS. To achieve this, I opened up the SSHD configuration of the VPS in Vim, before adding in the following listen address line, setting it to be the VPS's private IP as defined in the Tailscale dashboard. This line would cause SSH to only bind to that private IP address, which meant it would no longer listen on its public IP and would no longer be accessible over the public internet. This effectively means that only devices on that same Tailnet would be able to connect. To test that this was the case, I restarted the SSHD service using systemd, and then went and made sure that I could no longer SSH on the public IP, which, unfortunately, I still could. After spending a bit of time debugging, I couldn't figure out as to why this was happening, and I was still able to connect to the VPS using its public IP. This also happened to be one of those times that neither Google nor ChattyG could help. After hitting my head against the wall a few times and pretty much trying everything that I could think of, I resorted to the nuclear option and embraced downtime by restarting the VPS instance. This ended up being the solution that I was looking for. And whilst it did cause a bit of downtime on my service, which is something I absolutely hate, in the end, SSH was no longer accessible on the public IP, but was working perfectly on the tailnet. With everything working, I went ahead and added in another listen address option on the SSHD config, this time setting it to be the IPv6 address that Tailscale provides, which in my opinion is always a responsible thing to do. In addition to setting the listen address in the SSHD config, another approach you can take is to configure your firewall to allow access to SSH or port 22 from your
your tailnet's IP CIDR range. This is done using the following UFW commands on Ubuntu, and on other distros you'll need to use IP tables. Once those rules are added, you can then disable all public access to SSH using the following UFW deny commands on Ubuntu. In my case, I like to have both the firewall setup and the SSHD listen address configured, as it again provides a double layer of security. In any case, with that, I had managed to lock down SSH on my VPS to private networking only. However, in doing so, I now had another quality of life issue to contend with. Beforehand, whenever I wanted to SSH into a machine, rather than needing to remember the IP address of the instance I wanted to SSH into, I was able to just use the DNS record of the box itself, which in this case was zenblog.ai. However, because this record is pointing at the public IP of the VPS instance, which I'm no longer able to use to SSH into, this meant that I could no longer SSH into the VPS using the zenblog.ai host name. Instead, I now had to use the private IP address, which, to be honest, isn't exactly the easiest thing to remember. Whilst one could potentially design a system in order to memorize any private IP, or perhaps more realistically, spend time looking up the IP in the dashboard, I instead wanted to find a solution that was a little more scalable. The first approach I considered was to just add in an entry with the private IP into my SSH config. And whilst it did work, because I work on multiple machines, then this ended up being somewhat tedious to configure on each one. Fortunately, however, I didn't need to go ahead and do this on each of my devices, as Tailscale provides a feature that means you don't need to memorize any private IPs. This feature, called Magic DNS, is where Tailscale automatically registers DNS records for any devices on your network, meaning that you can access them with this device name rather than needing to remember their private IP address. By default, however, Magic DNS uses the machine's hostname, which in my case was something like SRV 564848. Whilst this name is slightly better than the IP address, it's still not exactly memorable. Fortunately, Tailscale allows you to easily change the Magic DNS value inside of the Tailscale dashboard. So in my case, I went and set this to be Zenblog VPS. This meant I could now log in using the following command, which is a lot easier than trying to remember a private IP. Using Magic DNS is not only great when working with a VPS instance, but it also works well for accessing any of the other devices on your tailnet, especially when traveling. In addition to SSH, however, Tailscale and Magic DNS also improves the usability of managing multiple VPSs in a private network, as you can easily swap out machines by changing their hostname rather than having to reconfigure the application's configuration itself. Using Magic DNS makes working with SSH and Tailscale incredibly easy. However, another feature worth mentioning when it comes to Tailscale and SSH is, well, Tailscale SSH. This feature allows you to hand off authentication and authorization of SSH connections to Tailscale when connecting from your tail net, meaning that you don't need to worry about managing SSH private keys, instead just deferring to Tailscale's ACL list. This, in my opinion, complements really well when ensuring that Tailscale can only be accessed over your tail net. To enable this, you basically use the following Tailscale up command, adding in the dash SSH flag. If you're doing this over an existing SSH connection, then you'll get a warning, and so you'll need to do it with the following accept risk flag. Upon doing so, it'll boot you off your existing SSH connection, but I can now SSH in from my tailnet, even if I don't have my SSH key available. Additionally, if I try to SSH in as the root user, then the Tailscale SSH feature adds an additional layer of security by prompting me to authenticate with my Tailscale account. In any case, with both Tailscale installed and SSH locked down, my VPS was now much more secure. Uh, perhaps a little too much, however as I had a new issue to contend with, one that I discovered when I went to push some new code to my Zenblog GitHub repo, which subsequently triggered my CICD pipeline, which then suddenly failed. This was due to the fact that my CICD pipeline was using SSH with the zenblog.ai hostname in order to redeploy the Docker stack. Therefore, before I could call it job done, I needed a way to connect my CICD pipeline to my tailnet. Fortunately, Tailscale provides a solution through their GitHub action. However, setting this up is a little bit more involved than the other steps I had taken so far, as it gets into some of the nitty gritty of configuring a Tailscale ACLs. Luckily for me, I never shy away from a challenge. So I went ahead and rolled up my sleeves before diving into the documentation to figure out how it worked. 
In order to do so, the first thing I needed to do was to create an OAuth client in the Tailscale dashboard. To do so, you need to define the appropriate scopes that your client needs, which in the case of the GitHub action, is the right access of the auth keys property. However, in order for this to work, I needed to specify an ACL tag to associate this property with, which I hadn't yet done. Therefore, I needed to head on over to the Tailnet ACL definition, which is found inside of the Tailscale dashboard. This definition is used to define the access control list, or ACL, of your Tailnet. To set up a tag for use with my CICD, I added in the following JSON block, specifying a tag called CICD, and gave it access to port 22 of my Zenblog VPS. With the tag created, I was now able to select it when defining the OAuth scopes, before then creating the OAuth client. This provided both the client ID and client secret for me to use. To do so, I went ahead and copied and pasted these into GitHub secrets, one for the Tailscale OAuth client ID and the other for the Tailscale OAuth client secret, uh, respectively. Then with the OAuth application set up and the secrets stored in GitHub, all that remained was to add the Tailscale action as a step in my deploy workflow, just before where I was calling my SSH action, which in my case was the Docker stack deploy. The last thing I needed to do was to change this hostname from the zenblog.ai to the one that I defined with the magic DNS record, zenblog-vps. Then with that, all that remained was to test this out, which I did by pushing up the changes and watched with anticipation to see whether or not the pipeline succeeded, which it did. With that, I had managed to effectively level up the security of my VPS, removing public access to SSH whilst still allowing myself and my CICD pipeline the ability to access it through Tailscale. Not only is this more secure, but it's also surprisingly easy to set up and helps to give me some of that peace of mind when I'm falling asleep that my box isn't likely going to be popped. In any case, I want to give a big thank you to Tailscale for sponsoring this video. I've been using them for a few years now and they're a product that I both absolutely love and recommend when it comes to any sort of zero trust networking, be it on VPSs or when it comes to accessing my home lab whenever I'm traveling. If you want to try out Tailscale for your own VPS setup, then make sure to use the link in the description down below and use the coupon code Dreams of Code for three months free. Otherwise, I want to give a huge thank you to my newest channel members, Kirill Shavoniak, B88P, and a big shout out to Coding with Lewis, who happens to be a fellow YouTuber that you should absolutely check out. In any case, a big thank you to everyone else for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.